Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you. And wow, a lot of people. All right, so as usual, I'm going to just give you a quick talk about what's going on in Arduino, what's happening, and what we're up to. You know, there's always more stuff going on, more projects, and more people. So it's, uh, it's exciting to see Arduino grow from 10 years ago. It was a small open source project with, you know, f five people sort of doing it as a, whoa, <laughs> working on it as a sort of a hobby to become a multinational company because we have offices in the US, in Italy, Switzerland, Sweden, India, Hungary. So it's becoming quite a big, uh, quite a big entity right now. But I'll just, let's go back to the practical stuff. Okay, well, the remote control works, amazing, okay. So, so we've been talking about this new product here, the Arduino Tre for a while, and it's almost ready to, to be released. We took a lot of time to actually refine the software that goes onto the device, and actually, we, we developed a whole stack of software that I'll tell you a little bit more later that makes, makes it easy for people to operate the Linux that's running the board, because not everybody is a Linux geek. Not everybody wants to be a Linux geek in order to use the power of Linux. So we put all these layers on top. So this is a preview of the latest version of the interface on the, okay. So this is the kind of the home page of the Arduino Tri when you open it. So the idea in the Arduino Tri, it's a Linux machine, you connect it to the network, you point your browser to the board, and the IDE comes out as an HTML5 application. And then it has this kind of a home page where applications can install icons. So the idea is that you can install multiple softwares, and depending on the kind of use you're gonna do for the board, for example, if you do it in an educational environment, you can you can put different kinds of educational software and documentation next to the IDE. So this is some of the control panels that we are building to make it easy for people to configure the network, configure the, there's even a panel to configure cron, so you can launch multiple sketches at different time of the day and, and all of that. So the idea is we're spending a lot of time really working on this interface to make it very, very easy. So in a couple of weeks, when we are in Rome, uh, at the Maker, a maker fan in Rome, we will tell you exactly the date where this is gonna be available on the market and, and all the other information. And another project we've been working on that I'm very excited about is this Arduino Zero. So this is an Arduino with a Cortex-M0 processor. So we have a small Cortex-M0 Plus. Sorry, I keep forgetting about the Plus. Which is a, a very interesting ARM device and this is the first Arduino that comes with a debugger on board. So this, the, the, you see there's a square chip there on the, sort of on the left-hand side, that's, that's a debugger. So when you plug that through the USB cable to a computer, you can actually program the chip, but you can also control the way the program flows. So you can stop the program, read the variables. So for the first time, we provide an Arduino with a sort of fairly almost professional level tool that lets you kind of debug the difficult bits of code because, again, this Arduino Zero and is part of this work that we're doing to actually uh, make it simple for people to do Internet of Things applications or connected devices. So we feel that this Cortex-M0 Plus is a good platform for a certain class of this Internet of Things application. And this is some of the work that we have been doing lately is a lot about these connected devices. So people have been doing IoT projects with Arduino since 2006 or five. So we've been doing it for 10 years. But now you know, we wanna provide tools that allow people to make complicated projects with Arduino. And you know, this thing about the Internet of Things is starting to become a topic of discussion because you know, it goes beyond the technology. You know? uh, okay, that, this is a, a, a blog I found you know, where there's this debate, so why my, my fridge doesn't have internet yet? No, and this is, this is the question, like, there are fridges with the internet, uh, so you, you can browse the internet from the fridge or something like that. But actually, not many people buy it. So this means that you don't just throw a piece of technology into a refrigerator and sell it and people say, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. 
browsing the internet while I'm opening the fridge to get a meal <laughs> bottle. No? So that's exactly what I needed, no? So, and so the idea is that we want to help people design products that make sense. So we have helped people with the work we have done until now with Arduino, and we have released to the world a lot of different technologies that have open source technologies that people have used to build projects. So I've been working for a little bit on this manifesto for connected devices, so the Arduino point of view on this kind of projects, which is, you know, when, when you're talking about connected devices, you're always talking about some kind of an online service. So the, what you do on this new category of products, in a way, sends information back to the network. So there is a whole different aspects that go beyond a classic, you know, if you have a toaster and your regular toaster and you're just toasting bread, okay. But if that toaster is connected to the internet, it opens up a lot of philosophical questions that you need to answer. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, one of the examples I was, you see, imagine that you have like the internet toilet, you flush the toilet at two o'clock in the morning and then kicks off a message that goes to a web service that kicks off a bunch of sequence of commands that kind of go through the internet and get logged into a big data database simply because I just flushed the toilet, no? So that obviously brings a lot of philosophical questions. So one of the things that happened when I was talking to some friends about if you can set some principles that then reflect in the way you implement the technology, because we have too many technologies that are just, you're just kind of thrown onto the market with no thinking behind it. But we have also to think what, as people who build the products of today and the future, we have to think about the impact of what we do. And we need to be able to design with people and not design whatever we feel and say, okay, you don't like it, I don't care, just have it anyway because this is what I designed. So we looked at, I looked at this thing called the slow food movement. It was a movement that started in Italy in the 80s. It's also popular in a lot of places in the US about, you know, it was a reaction to the arrival of fast food and McDonald's into Italy. So the idea that they said, you know, food should be good, clean, and fair, and it kicked off a lot of different, you know, activities about making sure that food stays good, clean, fair, and, and, and it's this whole philosophy behind it. And we realized while chatting that this could apply a little bit to this connected devices project. So for example, good for me means open source. Open source is good for innovation, but it's also good for us to be, in a way, it's some kind of an insurance sometimes, no? If something is open source, we know we can react to changes in the market, changes in companies' decision. You know, one of the things that started to happen more and more on the web is that you buy an application, you love that application, you start to be dependent on that application, and then you, one day you open the website and it says, hi, we've been bought by Google, we're shutting down tomorrow morning. You're like, no, I loved you, why are you doing this? <laughs> so, so how do we protect ourselves from one day I'm trying to toast a slice of bread and says, hi, I've been bought by Yahoo and I'm shutting down tomorrow morning. No, I need to toast it. So in a way, you know, open source, open protocols, open source of implementation of those protocols protect us from these kind of shifts in a way, you know? And we have been doing that a lot, you know, by releasing a lot of open source technology or convincing big companies to open source their technology or helping us deliver open source uh, product to the to the to the market, and we have been, you know, we made standards from the bottom up. So invest, instead of creating massive consortia and kind of sitting down to write specs, we just make stuff that people copy, and it becomes a standard. So, so five guys in a basement invent a board, and then a five billion dollar company copies it as the best example of innovation. And so it's an interesting. The other aspect that I like is clean for me means trying to try to provide an alternative to what we call disposable design. The idea that people design these products that are, in a way, meant to go obsolete in six months so that you buy another gadget, you know? But a lot of people have grown, you know, to love some products they had for a long time. And they, you know, there are radios that your grandmother left you that you can still turn on and listen to the radio. And there are some connected devices that you bought six months ago that don't work anymore. And so the idea is, that again, can we be concerned for the long-term user experience, the usability of these products, and can we help people move to another cloud provider if your cloud provider gets bought by another giant? Hi, we've been bought by Facebook. Thank you very much. And so, you know, so again, also this idea that design should not be a luxury, 
but something that kind of helps people. And fair, again, one of the things that I like is that we try to, we need to design cloud services where you're not the product, where, you know, you know what happens to your data. If you're not happy what happens to your data, there's an open source implementation of whatever service that you can run yourself if you want. So providing options where you know where your data goes and you own it in a way or another. So these are some of the platforms that we do and we have and we try to, we're now working at implementing different uh, features that we discussed in some of these platforms. But also this is all the stack of software that Arduino is providing right now. So there's that gray box over there called the Arduino Cloud, which is what we're developing right now. But all the other stuff is different bits of software that we develop to make it easy for people to use. For example, on the Arduino Ion, our control panels make it easy for you to manage OpenWRT, or there are all these services that allow you to inter interact with your IoT device through REST connections and all of that. And on top is the HTML5 IDE, which when we release it in kind of late October, it'll be open source. So we will have an HTML5 JavaScript IDE that's beautifully designed, available for people to use in their own devices if they want to. And also, you know, we have great collaborations with people like Tembu, who make it really easy for you to connect to all, a lot of different services online. So, you know, all of these tools make it very easy for people to build cool products without necessarily spending years and years and years trying to learn these technologies. So one of the small bricks of this big wall that we're building, you know, this, this is the Arduino cloud, trying to use, trying to make an easy cloud, try to design all the different protocols and make them open source or allow for different clouds to talk to each other so that you can and building smart electronics, and in Rome I'll have more news about this other work we're doing on smart electronics. Easy to develop tools is what one of the things we're working on now. So one of the small bricks in this kind of big construction is this product we pre-announced yesterday with Atmel. So this is a, a new Wi-Fi shield for Arduino, which is designed to be lower cost than the current Arduino uh, Wi-Fi shield. And it has also one other interesting feature. So once we were looking at all the different products that Atmel makes, they make this great Wi-Fi module they just released that contains all the software stack to do HTTPS, to be a access point and everything into that small module. But they also make other chips that they use in security application that actually allow you to do hardware enc encryption in hardware. So we realized that we suddenly we had a secure chip that you could use to actually do uh, private and public key authentication and encryption and all of that. And so we decided to work with Atmel to incorporate these two products. So this device has the ability to not only authenticate itself to the cloud in a secure manner, but also authenticate that the cloud is exactly what it says it is, because that's another way people tend to hack into devices, not to be pretending to be the, the cloud service. So this is a, Again, a small innovation we try to drop into this product, try to not to make the yet another Wi-Fi shield, but to really enable a more secure family of, of devices. So this, again, in, in Rome, it will tell you exactly when it's available and how much it costs. And one little experiment, last thing I wanna tell you about is this other experiment that we're doing. This idea that if you wanna understand what it means to live in a world where the devices around you are connected, you need to be able to have people live in that environment and design it with the people and not, you know, despite whatever the people think of the thing you're, you're designing. And in the last years, I've seen a lot of these house of the future that are all fake. So you walk in, you walk around, oh, that's really great. You walk out, but nobody lives there. They're all designed by architects. They're an exhibition, they're fake. Nobody actually lives there. No? Then when you buy this product, you bring them home, you realize they don't talk to each other, they don't work. They look amazing in the fake environment, but in the real life, they don't really talk to each other. So we decided to take a piece of the office we have in Torino, which is a former car factory, so we, there's lots of space that's not used, so we turn a piece into an apartment. This is the floor plan. It has two living, two bedrooms, a lounge, a kitchen. It even has a terrace with a garden, so they can, we can grow vegetables there. And the idea, we, we partnered with somebody that really shares some of our 
ideas about, actually we share his ideas on, on the Internet of Things, she's Bruce, Bruce Terling that happens to live in Torino where we have one of the offices. And so we had a lot of conversation with Bruce about the nature of what happens with the future where everything is internet connected and all of that. So we decided to do this project where we have this apartment, Bruce is the curator, we're gonna be blogging and showing ex examples of products built with the open source technologies. The idea is to come combine sort of Italian design in a way, uh, digital fabrication and open source electronics. So the idea is that even the, the furniture in this apartment is open source. So we're gonna manufacture the furniture on site because we have a fab lab on the ground floor. And so the furniture is open source, the electronics is open source, and every week we publish a tutorial on how to build one of the devices we have there, or even the furniture, and, and Bruce is gonna talk about you know, the more sort of philosophical aspect of what happens when you live there. But the idea is that, obviously we have open source and hardware from Arduino, but one of the ideas that we have is to have a test bed, a place where to actually invite people to experience the technology, but also we wanna put it on Airbnb, so that anybody can just rent the apartment for a few days and be part of the experiment. Because, you know, we, we thought it would be a good idea to actually have real people in there and that kind of come and they know, you know, would you like to be part of this amazing IoT experiment and stuff like, yes, and then you can, you know, you can play with the, with the technology, you can be part of the technology, you can work with us on, on the technology. So it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be fun. And you know, sometimes maybe you go into the apartment, there's Bruce Sterling making coffees in the kitchen. So it's gonna be an interesting, you know, experiment. So this is the location in Torino where we have the Arduino office. There is this Fab Lab, which is still part of the Arduino office, and Toolbox, which is a nice co-working space that hosts the whole of the Arduino sort of environment there. So if you're a company and you're interested in sponsoring the project, let us know. We can talk about it. And uh, so it'd be interesting to experiment together what it means to actually live in a place where everything is connected to the internet, but you're part of the design process and you're not, in a way, on the receiving end of, of this technology. And the last thing I wanna remind you is that in two weeks from now, we have the Maker Fair in Rome. It's gonna be amazing. Last year we had 35,000 people in a weekend, which was pretty amazing for being the first time we organized it. There was people queuing up under the rain for hours to get in and all of that. And so this year is gonna be crazy. It's uh, 700,000 square feet of exhibition in a beautiful uh, auditorium designed by Renzo Piano in Rome. And, um, and we have 500 makers from 33 countries. So it's, coming, it's becoming beyond just the European borders. We have people from India, from China, from a lot of other countries. So if you get the chance, come over. It's gonna be amazing. It's curated by me and by my friend Riccardo Luna who is in the audience over there, who has just been nominated the digital champion of Italy. So tough job, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you survive the job. Uh, which means he has to convince the Italian government to implement digital technologies. Good luck. And so, but you know, <laughs> at least join us at the Maker Fair is gonna be amazing if you can. And uh, thank you for coming as again, again uh, and filling up the auditorium. Thank you. All right.